Now that we have the carousel block and generate blocks, I imagine some of you are going to want to build out a logo marquee like you see here on my screen. And while it's possible, it comes with some trade-offs and caveats that I think you should know about. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to set this up and then some of the gotchas and why I might not recommend the carousel block for this kind of implementation. So here inside the editor, all I'm going to do is add the carousel block and then choose the basic carousel, which will go ahead and give us carousel items with images inside of it, which just so happens to be exactly what we need for this logo marquee. Now I'm not going to make you sit through watching me add each one of these images. So I'll go ahead and fast forward to having seven different logos inside this marquee. Now I've gone ahead and added these seven different logos. As you can see, it's just the carousel item with an image block inside of it. But let's go through the settings panel here so we can talk about some of the things that you're going to have to set up right in order to get these to scroll the way you want to. The first one is the slides per view. I mentioned that I put seven images in here, but you can see I only have six slides per view. Let's go ahead and change that to seven and save those changes and we'll refresh on the front end and you can see my marquee is now static. In order to get this to rotate through everything, you need to have at least one less slide per view than slides inside your carousel. So even if I change this to four slides per view and save those changes, you'll see everything's going to animate fine. But in this case, I want to go back down to six, which is just one fewer than the number of items inside my carousel, which will just make sure everything keeps flowing the way it should. In my use case, I ended up putting 60 pixels in between each one of my images, but you can adjust that to whatever you need. We don't need to worry about centering the slides or auto height, at least not for now. And we're not going to worry about our responsive settings. Once we get down to the navigation, you can see that I've removed the arrows and the pagination dots. We're not going to be using those in this example, but you do want to make sure you have the infinite loop turned on, which is just going to allow your carousel to rotate through over and over again. So you never get to the end of it. Now, when we get down to our autoplay settings, obviously you're going to want to turn this on if you want these logos to scroll right away. And you're going to want to set this delay to zero milliseconds. If we put a delay on here, maybe we'll do a thousand milliseconds. Go ahead and save those changes and refresh on the front end. You can see it pauses for one second at the beginning. And once we get to that next slide, it's going to pause again for a second, which you'll see right here. Then it's going to start moving again. So if you want those to just continuously scroll, you'll want to change that delay to zero milliseconds. Up next, we have the settings for pausing on mouse enter and disable on interaction. We're going to come back to these later because these are one of the caveats that I want to talk about in how all this animation works. So for now, let's go ahead and scroll down until we get into the effects settings. Now the slide effect is going to work perfect for this, so we'll leave that, but you do have the option for fade. And then inside of our transition speed, you'll see that I've set mine to 8,000 milliseconds. However, it says inside these little helper notes that this duration can only be between 100 and 2000. In fact, if I click in here and click out, you'll see that it automatically changed this back to 2000. But if we save that at 2000 milliseconds and refresh on the front end, in my case, this is just way too fast for what I'm going for. So in order to get that past the 2000 limit, you got to scroll down here in the advanced panel. If you scroll down to your HTML attributes, you'll find one here for data speed. You can go ahead and change this to whatever value you want. And when you scroll back up, you'll see that my transition speed has changed to 8,000. Now, if we save that and refresh again on the front end, we can see they're moving at a much slower pace. So if you want to change that past the 2000 limit, you're going to have to use the data attributes in order to do it. Now we want to make sure that we have free mode turned on in order for this effect and leave that free mode sticky off. After that, you basically have everything you need. So let's talk about some of the caveats that come with this implementation. The first thing I don't love about this is that you're able to grab these logos and move them around. If this was a true marquee, you wouldn't be able to interact with it like that. And you can see sometimes I can throw these around and it will start animating again. And now it's actually animating back to the right instead of to the left like I had it before. So there's just some kind of weird quirks about being able to grab these and move them around. We also had those settings for pausing on hover or interaction. Let's go ahead and make sure we have both of those turned on. So we'll have pause on mouse enter and disable on interaction both turned on. I'll go ahead and save those changes and refresh on the front end. And you can see when I hover over this, it's not actually pausing, except that it is. You'll see when the slides get into place, now it goes ahead and pauses. 
Basically what's happening here is all these logos are moving through a CSS transition and it can't pause instantaneously. It doesn't pause until the logos get back to their resting place, which in this case would be when the logo hits the left hand side over here. Now, as long as I'm hovered on top of it, it's paused. And if I go off of it, it should start animating again, except there we go. Now it seems to have clicked in and started animating. Again, if I hover over it, nothing happens instantaneously. We have to wait until the logos get into position and then it goes ahead and pauses. It took me a few minutes to realize that this is what was happening, so I don't think it's a great experience for your users. You might have also noticed this flag that appears when you turn the autoplay on. It says that there's an accessibility issue and that autoplay requires a rotation control like a play or pause button for accessibility. So in order to make this logo marquee accessible, we need to have some kind of play or pause button. Now Generate Blocks has gone ahead and built that in. To get to it, you need to make sure that you select your carousel items here, and then you can click the block inserter, and here you see this carousel control block. Now it's important that you have the carousel item selected. If you just select the carousel itself, you don't actually see that block inside the inserter. So again, I'll just make sure I have the carousel item selected. I'll go in here and turn on my carousel control. And now we can see that this carousel control button is just below all of my carousel items, but we have some kind of vertical scrolling effect going on here where our logos are getting cut off. Let's go ahead and save those changes and just see what it looks like on the front end. All the logos are showing up now, but I have this weird little scroll bar that I have to scroll down to in order to get to this play or pause button, which isn't yet set up as a play or pause button. So let's go back in here. We'll go into our carousel. And I think in order to fix that scrolling issue, we need to turn on the auto height. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. We'll save those changes and refresh. And now we don't have that weird scrolling issue. So let's go back into the editor here. We'll go ahead and grab our carousel control. And we wanna move this above our carousel items. It just needs to come in the DOM order above the items, but you could always move it around visually if you don't like the way it looks. When we have that carousel control item selected, we have the option to change the control type. By default, it's set to the next slide, but we can change this to previous, play, pause, play, pause, toggle, or first or last. In this case, I wanna go with a play, pause, toggle, and then I can go in here and set the play icon. Here in the carousel options, we have different icons that relate to these options. So I'll go ahead and select a play and pause that match. So let's go ahead and save those changes refresh on the front end. And now you can see when I press pause, well, again, nothing happens. Just like before, this pause isn't actually gonna take effect until that transition finishes. Once the logos get into place, now everything pauses. If I go ahead and play it again and pause again, it's not gonna pause instantaneously. All the logos are gonna have to get into place and then it will pause. Now, just like before, it took me a while to figure out what was happening here. And I imagine if people press the pause button, they're gonna expect it to pause instantaneously. And this is just kind of a limitation of the way this is set up as it really wasn't set up to be a marquee element. Obviously having a giant play pause button on here doesn't look great either. And for some of these reasons, I really just don't like this implementation because you're gonna run into accessibility issues and I don't think the user experience is great. Now I'll admit it is kind of weird to make an entire tutorial video just for the conclusion to be, I don't really recommend you do this, but I know a lot of people are gonna wanna use this kind of effect. So I wanted to show you how it works and also talk about some of those limitations and caveats and trade-offs that you're just gonna have to deal with if you try to use the carousel block in this fashion. Fashion. Hopefully you learned something in today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to make sure to catch the next one, hit subscribe and we'll see you then.